Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich. And I'm Nina Zagarevich. And we are joined by missionary evangelists Tony and Marge Abram. Thank you for joining us. Please share on your social media, share wherever you can. Let your friends know that the broadcast is on. And even after the broadcast is on, please share this because it will be an encouragement to others. And it is a form of witnessing about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we are continuing to pray for this nation as well as the nations for the, for, uh, of the world. And if you have prayer requests, please send them in. We do take prayer seriously, and we do pray for those requests that come in, and they do come in from Ukraine, from India, from Nepal, from Pakistan, from Cuba, from South America, uh, from here in America, from Canada. We do take those seriously. Well, welcome, Tony and Marge Abram. We are glad to be with you today, Brother Walter and Sister Nina. Truly, our God is a great God. I just maybe take this opportunity to read a few verses while I'm speaking here. And it's found in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 and 29, and then 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, no, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. And then the other verse I want to read is, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait upon you. And, and you know, we, we all are going through trials and tests, especially in this last day we live and, and uh, our faith is like under fire because the enemy is attacking God's people. But we have to be strong in him, knowing the great God we have. There, He faints not. He doesn't faint, nor does he ever get weary of our requests to him. And he gives strength to those that are weary. And when we call upon him and wait upon him, he renews our strength. Praise the Lord. So we have so much to be thankful for our great God, sometimes we, we have, we don't know where to turn, but you know, uh, we know our God is sufficient for every need, no matter what the need may be, your needs of, and, and those of you that have sickness and disease, and he is sufficient for every need. And so today we're going to believe God to touch you and heal you, and remember, our God never gets weary of our requests, of our coming to him. His arm is not shortened that he cannot save. Praise the Lord. So he is with you today. And he wants to, <clears throat> he wants to supply every need. If I remember right, uh, Ephesians 3.14 or 19, uh, Paul said that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And What's so wonderful about when we surrender our life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he took away that which was uh, evil in our lives. I mean, he really helped us with it. The things that we did was, was wrong, and, and he replaced it. Uh, if there was hatred, he replaced it with love. If there was sadness, he replaced it with joy. If there was torment, he replaced it with peace. Yeah. And, you know, I've noticed on the advertisement last, at least on the radio, the last couple of days, they are advertising that everyone under 65 years of age should be uh, tested for panic, for uh, depression. And uh, they said because of this uh, time of going, having uh, this pandemic, uh, that people are depressed and they need to be examined for it. Well, I, I, they didn't say it, but I know what the, they're thinking of. The suicide rate is higher than it's probably ever been. However, there's a cure. 
trust God, yeah. trust Jesus, receive Jesus, and he can take that in that in in patience and give you patience. He can take and give you goodness. He can give you faithfulness. He can give you gentleness and he can give you self-control. And the answer is Christ. Jesus is the answer. And also so wonderful. Mm -hmm. He doesn't turn anyone away. No. Praise the Lord. So mm -hmm. I, I thought I would just insert something a little humorous here. Uh, I know that Brother Walter has preached in uh, Sister Nina in uh, Taiwan. And uh, of course, we've been over there together. But uh, I remember on one of our trips, we were holding some crusades and uh, we were in Taipei for a crusade. Now, Brother Walter is one of the best, greatest interpreters uh, in the world. I have used hundreds of them over the years and I put Walter as number one. But uh, uh, as good as he is, uh, he, he never did something that I had an interpreter do in uh, Taipei. I remember we were in this large auditorium, it was a crusade, and God was doing many wonders. And uh, during the prayer of faith for the sick, people, well, it was during that time when a lot of people were falling down under the power of God and and all over the place, people had fallen down. And the Lord was moving upon me with words of, uh, you could say were preaching, or you could say it was prophecy. But as I was prophesying or preaching at the end there, praying for the people, uh, my interpreter, who I didn't know till the next day, when I saw her picture in the newspaper, she was Miss Taiwan, and uh, she had come in third place for Asia as, uh, uh, I don't know what they would call that, Miss, Miss Asia, maybe. But anyway, she was Miss Taiwan, and she was translating, good, good translator. And um, uh, the Lord gave me something to say to her, and I turned, and uh, all of a sudden, she was she just fell down yeah, I'd slain under the power of the holy spirit and uh speaking i don't know if she was speaking another language but because i couldn't understand Thai, uh taiwan or uh, mandarin that's what she was translating me in and I'm, I'm looking and what could i do uh no there was nobody else there to translate i looked over at marge and and uh, what to do so I just handed the microphone to one of the preachers. Well, that was humorous now. And uh, here I was stuck without a translator. And I thought, I didn't do like Dagwood in the comic strip. I didn't holler out Blondie or Walter. I didn't holler <laughs> that out. And uh, But anyways, uh, God is so good. And we appreciate uh, Walter and Nina Zagrevich yes. and their ministry of uh, Global Vision. They're doing a wonderful work in, in Africa and in Asia, Nepal, uh, India. And of course, you know what we're doing or he's, they are doing in, in uh, Ukraine. And uh, listen to the news today. Bad news, even though uh, Ukraine is doing uh, marvelous during this time of war and so forth, but... Uh, the news I heard today didn't sound good, but God is still in control Amen. and our trust is in the Lord. So I better get back to you before I really start preaching here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, praise God. Um, uh, Sister Morris, as you shared about waiting on the Lord, uh, it is something that uh, it is uh, that is not done by many people waiting, uh, whether it's on the Lord or on anything else. People have gotten accustomed to a very instantaneous uh, response, instantaneous uh, messages, instantaneous uh, or microwaved uh, uh, food. And so people want things now. However, God sometimes has to work things out in our lives. God makes us stronger through those processes, through that waiting. None of us want, uh, want to wait, but God knows what we need, and he knows how to and when to uh, 
produce a manifestation of that prayer that we have asked for. Uh, for. Now, uh, we know that it is God's will to heal. So there's no question there. We're talking about character. We're talking about uh, certain things that we bring before the Lord in, in prayer. And um, God is working. God is molding us. God wants to use us. God wants us to be more and more like Jesus. In, in today's society, um, uh, the waiting aspect is something that is uh, very seldom uh, talked about. And yet uh, we see in, in the Bible, as people waited, God worked things out and God led people to a greater victory and uh, greater results. And we continue to pray for Ukraine. If you haven't seen, we just put out a, our last newsletter earlier today, and uh, we posted it also on Facebook. So you can re please read that. The situation is quite um, desperate in many areas of Ukraine. Winter is quickly coming upon them. And with the colder temperatures, things are getting much more difficult for people. Uh, people have been set free in certain parts of eastern Ukraine, the Kharkiv region. However, the 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 uh, these people, some of them have not had medicines, very little food for six months now. Uh, people are have been frightened because uh, they've been uh, in bomb shelters in their basements. I mean, in villages, they don't necessarily have bomb shelters, so they were in their cellars hiding. Um, and if you missed yesterday's broadcast, I interviewed Pastor Sergey. Um, Pastor Sergey uh, takes food, takes medicines to these places. He was the first one to reach some of these villages in Kharkiv that were liberated. He had been very close to those villages already because he was right up to almost where the uh, Russian soldiers were, where he would take help. But now he's going into the liberated areas. He said the young women were kept in cellars by the parents and relatives would not be allowed outside uh, because of the danger of, of the drunken soldiers or sometimes on drugs uh, that could take advantage of these women. And and so they would hide them. They would uh, children hiding in basements and, and cellars. This is not for one day. The people themselves afraid to go up because of the shelling, the bombing, the shootings. And uh, the situation was just dire. The, the, the people were, are just, were I mean, they, they didn't know what was going to happen with them. A lot of them without electricity and the water cut off in many places. When summer came, they, uh, they had already used up all their reserves. Uh, um, the story that was told uh, Pastor Sergei by the local residents that the Russian forces, um, uh, he asked him, did they ever help you with food or anything? How did you survive? He says twice they gave him help. It was very minimal. One kilo, kilogram, which is about just over two pounds of a grain called buckwheat. I, we know what it is. I'm not sure if you use it much here in America, but buckwheat, one kilogram. I mean, if you give that to a family twice in six months, how are you going to survive? One liter of oil, three eggs. I don't know why three, but three eggs and a couple of uh, uh, cans of um, canned, so, uh, meat. canned meat and or stew. And that was it. Um, and so uh, people, whatever they had, they scrounged uh, in winter is very hard. When spring came, they tried to plant and in, in, in summer to eat from their gardens, but it was very dangerous. Uh, the area was mined. They're still removing mines right now. While he was there taking food, a cow blew up uh, not far from him. A dog on the other side blew up because they stepped on a mine. Um, apparently, um, some of the mines were thrown uh, from the airplane and they they come out of a, a piece of ordnance or some sort of rocket, and then they come down with little parachutes and they land all over the place. And they're just small, they're a little bigger than the size of a uh, of a finger. And you don't see this. He shared how one brother, uh, he didn't know he was a brother. He, one Christian there came up to him. He says, you know, he was walking 
and he almost stepped on one. I mean, it was the next step, and somehow the Lord just showed him because it's difficult to see this. He says, even the people that lay these, the ones that go around laying these mines, some of them are aerial, but other ones are laid. He says, they don't remember where they put it. They don't see them. Sometimes they blow up because they forgot where they, and don't see those mines. And he almost stepped on, the Lord showed him that mine, and he stopped and froze there, had his phone, was able to call, and someone came to remove that uh, uh, that mine, and he was, he could have lost his leg or his life. And so this is a kind of danger that people were living. So they were, would plant things in their garden, but they couldn't, um, it was too, it was dangerous. Some people were hurt, some people were killed, just trying to work their garden to be able to survive. So it was a very, very difficult, dark period. And it's easier now that they've been liberated, but aid needs to get to them immediately. Uh, he shared how that some of these people were totally without their medication. So he he uh, inquired what were the needs. He brought in uh, certain heart, uh, blood pressure uh, medication and things that people desperately needed. He says, I cannot imagine how some of these elderly survived for six months without their medicines, no pharmacy working, stores were not operating. And he says, you know, I can, um, I can understand this because as a child, I had high blood pressure. He says, my pressure at the age, uh, blood pressure at the age of 12 was 140. I would get frequent nosebleeds. But he says, when I came to Jesus, I was completely healed. I just, you know, it wasn't even the prayer for the sick. I gave my life to the Lord and I was healed. And I have not had to take one tablet since that day. But I said, these elderly ladies that I met up there, some of them had blood pressure over 200. And he says, you know, how do they survive without these uh, their medications? So it's a very, very difficult situation that is being walked into. Minds all over the place. Uh, bodies are being exhumed. Uh, some people, I mean, the situation is just uh, a very, very, very bad. But in the midst of this, people are turning their lives to Jesus. Uh, uh, people, These people asked uh, Pastor Sergei and other pastors and volunteers, says, why are you doing this? Why are you risking your life? And what do you expect from us in return? He says, we don't expect anything from you in return. He says, there are people who don't know you in other countries who are praying for you, and they want you to know that they care for you and are concerned for you, and they've provided this help that we are bringing to you. And he says, these you should see their faces. They tear up. They cannot believe what they're hearing, that people that don't know them would send them help and not ask for anything in return. And so um, he starts talking to them about the love of Jesus. And so many of them are just uh, receiving <laughs> Jesus Christ, seeing the love of God in action. And that is what is happening on the positive side, that many people are finding a relationship uh, or, uh, or coming to Jesus Christ and finding mm -hmm. hope in him and beginning a new relationship with the Lord. Uh, so Amen. yes, people may be uh, depressed, people may be upset and, and going through uh, many things in America, but if you would just for one moment compare to what some of these people are going through, uh, it's a huge, huge uh, a leap from what what a, a huge difference from what we're seeing there but you know god knows and god is answering prayer mm -hmm. some people um uh, are, are crediting uh the ukrainian military but the ukrainian military they were in amazement themselves they could not believe their own eyes what was happening it was literally a biblical type of uh, situation where, for example, in, in the Bible, we read about the two lepers that went shuffling their feet into the camp of the enemy, and they just thought there was a huge army, got up and ran and left everything behind. Well, it wasn't two lepers, I know, and it was there was a Ukrainian army, but they were outnumbered, my understanding is three to one three to one, and they could not believe what was happening. It's like fear gripped uh, the occupying forces. They ran so fast uh, 
Uh, Pastor Sir Gates told me that in one uh, town there, uh, they they didn't they they ran so fast they left their mechanics behind. Their mechanics that were fixing their vehicles and tanks mm -hmm. and whatever they did not know that what had happened. They turn around and they're surrounded by Ukrainian soldiers just wondering what in the world's going on where, where are the Russian soldiers mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 so things like this happened it's just like fear gripped their hearts and and they somehow imagined that something huge was coming upon them and they just ran literally ran he said they left all kinds of equipment uh, he sent us pictures of different types of uh, ordinance and stuff that was just left behind as they ran and so uh, the uh, so the Ukrainian military may be good but let me tell you this was a God moment this was mm -hmm. the answer to your prayers our prayers and the prayers of the Ukrainian church Amen. and the church worldwide God has heard those prayers God is answering prayer and it's moments like this that we see how the the answer comes about mm -hmm. and uh, so we praise God for the liberation of these people we pray for them they need help right now and we're trying to do whatever we can do and uh, we can only do that with your help and I want to thank you Tony and Marge because you, uh, the two of you, and personally, and also your ministry, Abundant Life Crusades, have had a huge part in this. And I want to thank others, other ministries, other ch uh, churches and ministries that are partnering with us in the U.S., in Canada, in some other countries. I don't want to start getting specific here, but thank you for your partnership together we are making a huge difference in the lives of many people. Literally tens of thousands of lives have been saved, have been rescued, and thousands upon thousands have been fed and continue to be fed. Amen. I just want to thank everybody as well as just thank you for your support. We really appreciate it that we can provide these funds for the people there, that they could be the hands and feet of Jesus and show God's love in their actions. And I went just going back to what Marge and Tony, and you were saying how God hears us. Um, that's why we pray because God does hear it. It says in Psalms 34, the Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He hears us. And then it says he rescues them from all their troubles. God will rescue. God is rescuing. The Lord is close to the broken heart. He is near you. He is He is with you if you are broken heart. And he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. No matter what's going on, you may be discouraged, but God is near you. He's close to you. He's rescuing you. The righteous person faces many troubles, but... The Lord comes to rescue each time. So in this scripture, in just two verses, he mentions rescue three times. He is he is on a rescue mission. He has not forgotten you. He hears your prayer and he is close to you. So we thank God for his word. So um, it says in um, Joshua, I believe, I will not fa fail you or abandon you. Be strong and be very courageous. Why? Because God is with you. Amen. Tony. What shall we then say to these things? Romans 8, 31. After hearing these testimonies and then the word from Nina, uh, what can we say to these things that if God be for us, who can be against us? And that's the 31 verse of Romans 10, no, 8. And then if you read a few more verses on, get up to the uh, 38th verse, it says uh, that we are more, more, more than conquerors through Christ who gives us strength. He strengthens us. And so we can't lose for winning. We can't go under for going over. And even though, and I don't know, I, I of course, I listen to the news and, and here I'm hearing the uh, that Russia is calling up 300,000 more soldiers. Well, I, they can take on the whole army they have. And if God is not for them, uh, who can be against them? And it's not the Ukrainian army. 
which is nowhere as big as the Russian army, who could be doing these things. I believe it's prayer. I, I, I believe that war is wrong. No matter which side you may favor, it's wrong. God never intended for us to fight amongst ourselves. But we know this, that when, in the Bible, when there was war, there were a couple lepers that could march down and scare off a whole army uh, of a, a army of several nations. And I believe that we're living in the time and age that we're going to have to become more dependent upon God, where money is being devaluated, where inflation is just climbing the walls, where wars and rumors of wars, and where other nations seem to be rising up, planning attacks, we still have God. And if God be for us, who okay. then can be against us? We serve a, the great God, the creator of this universe. And how can we not trust him? Haven't we trusted him from childhood? If we received Jesus as a child, we've trusted him. And when we became a Christian, we've trusted him. Our God is on the throne. He is our shield, our our, shel our shelter in the time of storm. He's everything that we need. If we just look to God and trust him, just simply trust him as they did as these prophets of old and, and the judges and all of the leaders that were godly and kings and those in authority, they trusted that God would bring them through and God brought, and them, God brought them through battles and Amen. the children of Israel were brought through the wilderness God protected them and kept them and provided for them. Yes. Will he not provide for you Amen. and I? He cares about the little sparrow that falls to the ground. Amen. Won't he care for us? Amen. Praise the it's Lord. It's just like Nina's uh, gave that scripture. And I got I got to thinking that God always answers prayer. Uh, sometimes he, he may say no. There's sometimes we ask for things because he's got something better. And uh, he may answer no, or he may, may, may answer it's not to time, just wait a little while longer. And then he answers yes. And he can do things um, in the area of divine healing. Uh, he, 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 he may do it right now. And we, we'd call that a, a miracle. But then if he does it gradually, it's still healing, but it all comes from God. If he uses meds and a doctor, I have to say, that's the blessing of, of God, too, uh, that uh, it comes, if it wasn't for God, there'd be no healing whatsoever. And But thank God for salvation. It's whosoever will may come. And in the midst of these battlefields, I believe that even the soldiers that are fighting there, they can call upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord can give them victory and meet the needs of their lives. Yes. And there, we're, uh, Walter, you, you have been reporting this, and this is what really thrills my heart the most. Uh, I, I'm glad to hear about these other good, good things, natural things, uh, feeding the poor and so forth. But what my heart really thrills is that there are souls coming to Christ, that mm -hmm. uh, and one soul is worth more than the whole world. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world or lose his soul? said Jesus, so our soul is worth more than the, the whole world, and yet there are hundreds coming to Christ. And you know, when Jesus said uh, to feed the poor, to clothe the naked, and uh, when he told that, he, he had more than just one reason to fill in their belly or to cover their, their, their body. He knew that the good works can also help lead people to the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord. We thank God for what uh, your ministry is doing. What God, When you, at 19 years of age, started to work, and within a year you was a crusade manager and, and did all that at such a young age, yeah. little did I know at that time, although I knew God had his hand on your life, uh, that he would bring you and then your future wife, 
Nina into uh, a, a position in life, into the ministry that God has given you today. And I can say this, that the best is yet to come. The greater works are yet coming. And as you prove faithful, as you yes. keep running the race, as you keep get, both of you keep keeping the faith, you, you haven't seen it. The best is yet to come. Yes. Praise the Lord. And it's going to come soon because I believe that the day of the Lord is drawing near. When the final trump is going to sound and time shall be no more. Hallelujah. We're going to hear that trumpet and we're going to meet him in the air. What a day that's going to be. And I better be quiet. I'm getting ready to preach again. <laughs> Praise God. You can go right ahead. Uh, uh, we are trusting God and we are seeing an amazing, amazing harvest of souls in Harku, for example, um, when the war uh, began, many people fled. And I recall that the church started gathering in smaller spaces. They they used one of the rooms in the mm -hmm. church, and they would get about 100 people. They grew to 200, and then they couldn't fit in that smaller auditorium anymore. So they went into that huge auditorium that used to be, it was set up to almost 2,000 people because we had a crusade there, our first First crusade in Ukraine. But the uh, that auditorium, I think right now, the way it's set up with the chairs and so on is, is smaller. Uh, I mean, the auditorium is the same, but the seating, uh, I think, is uh, more in the 15, 1600 range. Mm -hmm. And nonetheless, um, they would pack that out um, before the war. But what happened is many people fled and 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 it was difficult to get uh, around because public transportation was cut off. Most people don't have cars. It was very dangerous to get out in the streets. It still is. But uh, the people, uh, as they found out that the church is meeting, they started coming. And, um, and many pastors left. They got up and left from there. So people from other churches started coming if they were still in town. And so they grew and they started a meeting in the large auditorium. It looked like not that many people for the huge hall, but then they had four. So they had 400 and 450. Then the next thing we knew they had 600 and 900. And now the auditorium looks quite full. And, and, and I know and that. mind you, the bombs are still falling oh, and they yes. are still coming. They feel that they're safe there. They feel hope there. So they're coming. They're risking their lives. Even to be in that auditorium, it's not a bomb shelter. It's, it's there in the middle of the city. And the pastor tells us because mm -hmm. we don't want people to confuse things, the church service with just a, the distribution of humanitarian aid. Some of the churches are doing this now. We'll do the humanitarian aid as a separate thing so that people don't just come because they're going to get help. And so they come because they want to come to church. And so uh, still they'll feed the hungry afterwards and they'll give out packages but the service is the service. It's not a distribution during the service of aid. And, and people still are coming. And sometimes they have an altar call of uh, uh, they've had 10, 20. And, and one time, 100 people that responded in one service. And this is in church. So people are coming to Christ. They've had already several baptisms. Their last baptism, just a few days ago, they baptized 33 people there in the city. And of course, there are baptisms in the villages. They started a church two months ago during war in one of the villages. Well, in Poltava, they're starting a few new churches too because many people have resettled in um, in Poltava temporarily because it's closer to Kharkiv. They think they could go back and safe uh, and safer a little bit. So and, then, and, and now there's there's all these people all over the place. Pastor Sergey told us yesterday that one school director approached him and he says they've got seventy uh, people living in the school. And he says, you know, uh, Sir Gay got him a refrigerator so they could store food for these people they're feeding. And that man says, you know, I used to think very badly of you Christians. I would never allow you to set foot in my school. But he says, now I have to apologize. He says, because if it wasn't for you Christians, I don't know 
how we would have fed these people. I don't know what we would have done. It's you Christians that came through and have helped to feed these people, to take care of these people. And and, and so it just totally changed the attitude, the outlook. Of, the outlook of people towards the church, because it is the church, it's not the government, that's done most of this humanitarian relief work and the work of rescuing people out of the um, these bomb uh, the, these bomb out cities and towns where they got too dangerous to live. Um, yes, the government has done their part. I think they've provided trains to for evacuation in places, but it is the church people and the volunteers that have done this work day in and day out. But the powerful thing is, Brother Tony, as you mentioned, to see those souls coming to Jesus Christ. And that's not the only church. There are other churches that are just filled up um, in Zaporizhia. Uh, they've got so many people, they're sitting outside, it's gotten cold and they try to put people in other spaces. They still are sitting outside uh, in, in, in inclement weather now. And they, they would come and they would sit outside and they've got them in every possible room and every hall and every corridor, the entryway. They put speakers where they could so people could hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're helping them there to, to get that building that they were building before the war um, a, a, a ready enough to get the people in there because uh, it's get, the winter is coming very rapidly and and that's the place they could uh, meet. So, um, so it is just amazing because that building was used to store a lot of supplies uh, for the uh, feeding the people and food distribution. And now they're trying to get the walls uh, uh, fixed well enough inside to get um, so they could move in there. But um, the church in Donetsk, uh, where uh, uh, Bishop Anatoly, uh, only 20 some people from his original congregation remained. The rest left because of the dangers of uh, being in Donetsk region. Uh, and what happened is he has over 200 people attending. Well, who are these people? They're new people. People are coming to Jesus. I think we should pray for Ukraine right now. I think that'd be a good time. Amen. Tony, would you pray for, for Ukraine? Our Father and our God, as we greet together, and Lord, there are hundreds and hundreds of people that are going to take time now to pray and in agreement. And the four of us, we agree. And you, Lord, you said in your word of two, agree upon yes, touching Lord. anything yes, it would be Lord. given them of our father which is in heaven and lord we agree together that you will undertake in ukraine you see these yes, efforts uh, yes, you see the efforts of uh, global vision and other ministries uh, lord as yes, they minister to the hungry to the needy to those that are hiding those young ladies uh, hiding in the uh, away from drunken soldiers, uh, Lord, from the enemy that were uh, they, where they were bound. Uh, Lord, now village after village is being set free and they're coming out and breathing air and coming out into the sunshine. Uh, Lord, we ask that you may spread across the country and let there be an end uh, to these battles. Let it be an end uh, to this war and an end to this talk of war, of nuclear war. Oh God, we bind those demonic spirits uh, that comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Lord, we want to see uh, the rest of that promise where you said, uh, but you had come that we might have life uh, and have it more abundantly abundantly. And so we ask for Ukraine, Lord, uh, that from the leadership down to the, the, the poorest one, uh, the youngest one, to the oldest one, uh, and all in between, Lord, uh, Lord, that salvation uh, may sweep the nation, uh, that people will call upon the name of the Lord, uh, and that in Russia, we would see a revival, a, a Lord, a revival of love, a, a revival of peace uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and end this war, Lord. Uh, 
in the name of Jesus. So we bind the work of Satan. We know it's the work of Satan who wants to continue to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to continue that. But we bind him in the name of Jesus, and we loose the blessings of God. Now, Lord, use the ministries like Global Vision with Walter and Nina. Lord, use them in other ministries, as I prayed a moment ago. Lord, use them for your glory in Jesus' name. Lord, we know they're not doing it to put a name uh, up for themselves. They're doing it because of the love of God. Oh, and then as much as they've done it to one of the least of these, uh, you said, Lord, that you had done it unto you. Uh, and so all this work, uh, all these efforts, uh, Lord, are being done in the name of the Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are yet going to do. Oh, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I feel in my spirit uh, that you're working and many are going to be saved uh, later today or. Oh, yes, and oh, yes, Lord, and in the days that come, uh, not only there but elsewhere, even those that are watching uh, uh, and listening to this program, uh, Lord, bring salvation. Let, let them knock on the door. Uh, let them seek the Lord. Uh, and because you said when we seek you, we would find you uh, when we search for you with all of our heart. Uh, in the name of Jesus, yes. in the name of Jesus, Brother Walter. Amen. Amen. Father, we bind the principalities and rulers of darkness uh, that have yes. stirred up this war, that uh, continue to push this war, and we say no to them. We arrest those demonic spirits, and we release the spirit of peace over Ukraine yes. and over the region. Yes. Lord, we release the spirit of salvation, of healing, of yes. deliverance, of blessing, of yes. prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we pray for the, your divine protection over the pastors, over the volunteers who continue to minister to the needy in, in these very dangerous zones and throughout Ukraine. Those who are ministering to the refugee community in surrounding countries and all over the world. Father, we pray that you would guide those pastors and help them and, uh, and anoint them with your spirit, anoint them with wisdom and divine impartation as their congregations are all over over the world. Father, use them, anoint them with your Holy Spirit, and may those uh, remnants that are all over the world, may they be the light shining to the darkness around them in Europe and wherever they may be at right now, even in America. Father, use them uh, as a witness uh, to those nations where they are at in the name of Jesus. They're in Israel, in Germany, in uh, Sweden, in the UK, yes. in uh, uh, in Spain, uh, Lord, in uh, Poland, in Romania, in other nations, Moldova. Father, we thank you that you are using these refugees. You are saving the ones that are not saved among them, but you are using the Christians amongst them yes, to Lord witness Jesus. and to evangelize those around them yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the victory. Amen. And Amen. folks, um, yes. Well, Brother Walter, I just, the scripture comes to me. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. What will you reap? Well, you're helping to reap those souls there in Ukraine as you give your offerings. And uh, as you do this, you're doing it in the name of the Lord, because we do all things in his name. And as you give, you're ministering to these souls that are that are needing Christ. You may not see these souls during this time, but you will meet them in eternity one day. Just Amen. think about that. You'll meet many of those souls that you've helped to win on that day. So 
give as you can and help in this effort that we we are doing with and helping Brother Walter and Sister Nina to continue this work of feeding those that are hungry. Because if we do it, we're doing it as we would do it for the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, over almost a thousand meal, hot meals are served mm -hmm. in Kharkiv alone. Many a meals are a being day. a day, every day. That's not just on Sundays. That doesn't and, include the packages. <laughs> that doesn't include the packages of big bags of food that are distributed to people that come and also taken to the elderly, to the mothers with little children that cannot leave their homes. Uh, so there's daily deliveries of food supplies to people. And now uh, tons of food is being sent to these areas. Some of them are very dangerous dangerous right now. I didn't post this, but the road to get the only road that was usable to some of these villages and towns uh, is not a very good road. The other roads are mined, they're destroyed. And, uh, but, but the aid is getting there. But we need to supply as much as possible urgently right now. And so if you sense an urgency in my voice, it is because the situation is dire and um, and the finances are needed to buy more food and medicines and get them as soon as possible to these, uh, especially these towns that just got liberated, but not just there, it's throughout Ukraine. People are unemployed. Uh, uh, the war has damaged so much. There are families that are split up um, where, uh, all over the country where the fathers were uh, had to stay behind to defend the country, the husbands, the fathers, the families are elsewhere. And so uh, many challenges, but your help is making a difference. Nina and I are heading there in a couple of weeks and we ask for your prayers. We're bringing some of these pastors uh, from these frontline zones uh, into a very secure area uh, in Ukraine where we can uh, give them a break from what they're doing, pray with them, pray over them, encourage them, and let them have a little bit of rest. We're going to take care of their housing, their meals, and we'll help them with their transportation. So pray for us, uh, pray for them as they make their way to, uh, to meet up uh, together. I don't want to give the particulars of where this exactly will happen here on the air but every the, the lord has put this on our heart and all the plans are coming together uh quickly and let me tell you every one of these pastors we're inviting them with their wives are just so thankful mm -hmm. they cannot believe that we would think of them even of some mm -hmm. such a thing as to help them have a break for just a few days you have to realize some of these pastors have been working day and night since the war began. And this is like their first break for some of them to be able to get away just for a few days to have a time of rest and refreshing um, where we can pray and, 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 and encourage one another. So pray for that. If God speaks to you, you want to help us with that. We don't want to go empty-handed. We want to bless these pastors. And of course, the ongoing feeding and providing food and medicines is an ongoing need. Um, so please, if God speaks to you, go to our webpage right now. There are different options you could use. You can use PayPal. You can use Givelify. If you want to uh, write a check, you could uh, write it to Global Vision Ministries designate Ukraine, and we will know that's what you want it to be used for. Our ministry is not limited to Ukraine. Later on this year, we're heading to Nepal. We'll be meeting with pastors from Nepal and from India. We'll be having a pastor's conference. We'll be involved in the ordination of pastors. We'll be involved in a baptism of uh, new converts. We'll be involved in speaking to people and meeting in person. Many of the pastors that we have been helping there and getting firsthand reports from them. Uh, that's at the uh, later latter part of this uh, uh, year. But right now we're getting ready for Ukraine and we're going to be there. We're going to be in Poland. We have requests uh, uh, from different groups to, to visit them. Uh, some of these are people that were in Ukraine and that still know us from Ukraine and want us to meet with them because they're gathering in places in uh, Poland. So we, we will have some ministry in Poland. We're going to assess the situation there. 
for um, ongoing ministry. And we're after Ukraine, we're also heading to Romania because the new churches are being planted there among these Ukrainian uh, refugees that have resettled in Romania. So uh, we will be there ministering and assessing the situation and the needs uh, uh, for future ministry there. There's a lot, a lot on our plates, um, and, and we're going to try to keep this broadcast going. We'll try to do some live broadcasting as much as we can from there. Uh, it is a huge time zone difference, and we may be in meetings during the time of these uh, broadcasts. My brother Tom McLaughlin is going to help us on some days, the days that he can. And we will try to do what we can on a live basis, uh, interviewing some of these pastors, getting firsthand accounts, and sharing uh, from there um, in Ukraine, as well as from Poland and Romania. So pray for us. Uh, it's, a, it's a long journey with a lot, a lot of activity. Brother Albert Ramirez is going to join us, and we're thankful for that as well. So uh, having said all that, please, if you can do something, do it right now. If you're going to do it by check, write it to Global Vision Ministries. The address is right over Nina's head, P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. Um, if you give through Brother Tony and Marge's ministry of Bundle Life Crusade, they're working in partnership with us. You can do that as well. If you're a partner of their ministry, we encourage you to continue to support their ministry and the work that they are doing. And so thank you to all who have done and what you've done has made a difference. But this operation is a huge, huge operation. It's massive. We're not working just in one city. We're working in various cities. And the needs are huge everywhere. And right now, the aid we're trying to get is into these previously occupied towns and villages as quickly as possible. So thank you in advance for what you have done and what you're going to do. Um, amen. Amen. Um, I know that we've talked a lot about Ukraine. We've emphasized Ukraine because the war is happening there. But we know that you have needs. We know that you have needs of provision or healing or that you need peace or maybe you're discouraged. So we're going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to ask Marge if you can pray for people's needs right now. Yes, praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to our great God who is sufficient for every need. Our great God, who is our creator, who made us in your image and Lord likeness. And we thank you, Lord, that you are sufficient for all of the needs as we look to you today. Father, those that are discouraged, Lord, lift them up. Remember, let them know the scripture and the words which you said, I am with you always. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Lord, you are with them and encourage them today. Lord, those that have needs financial needs lord those that have needs that lord they can only look to you to supply father supply their needs Amen. lord somehow miraculously somehow yes. lord speak to someone God, or some God, people God. to help them lord in their needs Amen. and father we pray for those that are sick even now with pain yes, we rebuke the pain as they Amen. look to God. you right now lord in Amen. jesus name lord we just pray right now be near them, Lord, and Lord, touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, in Jesus' name, and Lord, those that need you as we are going to have a prayer for them later, Lord, for those that need you as their Savior, we pray they will look to you, Lord, For and all will look to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we send the word to you, all of these, Lord. We send the word to those that are listening all over the world, Lord, this globe, this uh, land, Lord, this this country, all of our nations, Lord, we pray because you love the world. You gave your only son to have so we could have eternal life. So, Lord, right now we look to you, our great God, and we know that you are sufficient. So, Lord, just touch the people right now. Touch them by your spirit and power Amen, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. And, Lord, uh, those that have <laughs> 
written letters, those who have phoned, those who've sent text messages, yes. those who have sent email address, uh, messages requesting prayer yes. for yes. their babies, for their for their sick loved ones, uh, for those that stand in great yes. need, Lord, uh, even yes. those that are near the point of death, uh, Lord, as long as they know you, they'll step <laughs> from this life uh, into that new life, eternal life uh, that will continue on and on and on, uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and what a day that will be when we shall see Jesus, uh, when we look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. What a day, glorious day of that will be. And Lord, so we send the word of healing and we curse those cancers. We curse those those eye conditions. Uh, Lord, we curse the, uh, Lord, those cataracts. Oh, May they dry God. up and fall God. off. Uh, those ear oh, conditions, God. those deaf God. ears, Lord. Uh, all those heart conditions. Uh, Lord, mm -hmm. that skin condition, uh, those cancers die in the name of Jesus uh, that would attack the organs, uh, the skin, uh, Lord, in the, uh, Lord, in the prostate, uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, we send the word uh, for healing, Lord, healing. For you said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And we know that by his stripes, we were healed. And so we bring all these petitions to you and we lay them at your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the answer, Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you don't know Jesus as your savior yet, open your heart and say, dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner forgive me, wash me in the blood of Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he resurrected from the dead, and I received Jesus as my one and only Savior, Savior of God. If you pray that simple prayer or something similar, Jesus is coming into your heart right now. Just begin to thank him for forgiving your sins and Amen. do three things every day. Talk to him. We call it prayer. Talk to him from your heart. Let him talk to you. Read his word, the Bible. Number three, talk to others about him is something very important. Find a Bible preaching, Bible believing church where you can grow in your newfound faith. Well, we want to close by praying for America. We pray for other nations, and we continue to do so. And we pray for those uh, that have uh, been affected by the earthquake in Taiwan, earthquakes in other nations, including Mexico. Mexico. And we continue to pray uh, for those affected by the flooding in Nepal and in Pakistan and other nations, including this one. Uh, so let's continue to pray for the nations. And we continue to pray one for another, but we're praying for America because we want to see revival and God's intervention here in this nation. Amen. Father, we humbly come before you with a repentant heart, acknowledging that we need your mercy to save this nation from destruction. Father, your word reminds us that you, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, and that you keep your covenant and that you show mercy and loving kindness to your servants who walk before you in obedience with all their heart. Father, you are a covenant keeping God, and you have a covenant with America, and we pray in we intercede for the restoration of what the founding fathers stood for, a shining city on a hill, one nation under God, indivisible with justice and liberty for all. Father, we ask that you extend mercy upon this nation. We need you like never before. We need a divine intervention. We come to you, Lord, as you are the only true living God that can deliver us and save us. So we speak the name of Jesus. Lord, over the United States of America, Father, we declare that your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in our nation. Lord, you rule from the heavens and nothing, Lord, is hidden from you. Thank you that your light is illuminating the evil that has been hidden. 
Thank you, Lord, that you are answering our praise as you have exposed and continue to expose evil in our land. Father, we ask that you send justice to regain and to recover what the enemy has stolen from us. We speak justice to be administered to the United States of America and the plans of the enemy to be disabled and thwarted in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that the spirit of conviction to those in our nation promoting evil send a mighty flood of the Holy Spirit. Rise up the church with passion to see the lost saved, healed, and delivered from evil. We bind the spirit of action apathy upon believers, and we release the fire of the Holy Spirit. We ask for your revival fire to break out in every church and may it affect every town, every city, and every state. May every state capital experience the outpouring of your spirit. May every politician experience a revelation of who you are, Lord. May they be filled with the fear of God. May they bow to your Lordship. Father, I ask that you hover over Washington, D.C. right now with your spirit of conviction, justice, and truth. Send out your warring angels to fight as we declare your word over this nation. We decree in Jesus' mighty name the casting down of every strategy of the enemy. We bind the stronghold of perversion, of deception, murder, hatred, lawlessness, and wokeness in Jesus' name. Father, we release the spirit of repentance. May righteousness awaken and coming over our come over our country. Father, infuse all of us with boldness and power of the Holy Spirit to stand up and to speak out to defend our freedoms. We declare Jesus Lord over the United States of America, and we stand in faith that God's plans and purposes will prevail. And we decree that America shall be saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you for joining Thank us. You, Thank you, Tony and Marge. Thank you. And uh, folks, uh, just to let you know, we're on uh, Facebook. Book, and we're on YouTube, we're on uh, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn, Rumble, uh, Telegram, Rumble and Telegram. Uh, Rumble is not live, it shows up later, 24 hours, 24 later. hours later. And also, we're live on our webpage. So, if you don't know where to find us, a safe place to go is our webpage. Yeah, but wherever you are watching, thank you. May God richly bless you. Don't look at the bigness of your need, look at the greatness of God. He's much bigger than any, any problem or mountain you may be facing. And remember, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is the same right. yesterday, yeah. today, today, and, and forever. forever. Amen.